Good morning, friends, and welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm going to be taking you with me on a full day of cardiology consult so you can see a typical day in my life, so hopefully you're excited. Now, for the weeks that I'm on consult, I typically don't have to get into the hospital until around 8 or 9 a.m., but still, I got to get ready for the day. And if you've been watching this channel for a while, then you know I like to get up about an hour earlier before I have to leave so I can work on my own personal projects. And during that hour or two, I enjoy some quality time with my puppy by taking him out to use the restroom and enjoying this beautiful sunrise. And as soon as we get back upstairs, as I enjoy the most important part of my day, which is coffee and enjoying some breakfast. Today I have a delicious bowl of oatmeal with a little touch of honey. And then I usually use the remaining time that I have left to work on personal projects like videos for the MD journey. But now it's about 7 to 7.30 a.m. so it's time for me to get going. Now usually I'll leave my pager in the car because let's be real, no one wants to listen to that thing. But the first thing I'll do is try to figure out which patients my cardiology fellow has paged me to see for that morning. And will you look at that, I already have my first few to see for the day, so better get going. So I'm off to the hospital, which currently is about a 25 minute drive, and maybe it'll be faster if one of you want to lend me a Ferrari, but until then, I use that extra time to listen to an audiobook. Today, it's the TB12 method by Tom Brady. When I finally get past getting to the hospital, finding a parking spot, and walking the 10 minutes to actually get into the hospital, first thing I do is start reading about the new consults. But first, let's take a step back. What's a consult in the first place? How is it even different than other services in the hospital? In case you're not familiar with the terminology, being on a consult service means that I don't actually have any patients in my own to take care of. Instead, I behave as a consultant by providing advice or expertise for a specific problem. So currently I'm on the cardiology consult service, which means I help answer questions for other healthcare providers related to the heart. So things like chest pain, shortness of breath, arrhythmias, heart attacks, and more. So now that that's out of the way, time to see our first patient. So first to start the day, the first patient I have to see is a middle-aged lady who comes to the hospital complaining of shortness of breath. Now this patient already has a known history of heart failure, which means that her heart muscle isn't as strong and causes her to back up fluid, thus making her short of breath. Now for every patient with a history of heart failure, the main question is why are they having exacerbation? For this lady, the answer was pretty obvious. She had a history of an arrhythmia that wasn't well controlled, otherwise known as atrial flutter. Now to better understand what atrial flutter is, it's better to first describe how the heart works normally. Now usually the top and the bottom of your heart communicate in tandem. One beat from the top equals one beat from the bottom. But in atrial flutter, the top starts to beat a little bit too often. Think of it as a drummer gone rogue. And as you can imagine, this can be both uncomfortable, but it's also not physiologic for the weight that the heart is supposed to function. For this patient, it's actually causing her to be more likely to have a heart failure exacerbation. So my recommendation for this patient, two things. First, we have to get rid of some fluid with some diuretics, and most importantly, we have to get her out of this rhythm by shocking her heart in our EP lab to make sure she gets back into her normal rhythm, thus reducing the chances that she goes back into a heart failure exacerbation. So pretty cool stuff to start the day if I say so myself. Now the rest of my morning is spending a combination of old patients I need to follow up on and new patients in the ED, most of them complaining of chest pain. And throughout the morning I'm starting to realize that if there's one reason that I'm relatively skinny, it's the amount of steps that I get in the hospital. Now today I'm going to be attending a lecture and manage to grab some amazing coconut curry and rice on the way. To be honest, I'm craving some more just by looking at it. But now after I enjoyed that delicious meal and that lecture of course, it's time to get back and see what new consults I have to see for the afternoon. And at least for today, most of the afternoon has been spent talking to the teams for the patients that I saw during the daytime as well writing my notes and recommendations. And just when I thought it was almost time to go home at 5 o'clock, just my luck, we get another consult. And this one, the classic cardiac problem, chest pain. Now this one's from the emergency room, so I have to see this patient sooner than later, so I make my way downstairs. And in the midst of an active COVID pandemic, I have to make sure that I just play it safe, so I'm just going to go ahead and gown up for this patient. Now this patient was a man in his mid-40s who had been having on and off chest pain for the past few weeks, which concerned the ED provider. And now if there's one thing that I know and I want you to remember after watching this video is that the heart is not the only thing that can cause you chest pain. And so in this particular case, in this particular patient, I saw that I could reproduce his exact chest pain just by pushing down on his chest, which is classic for costochondritis or otherwise known as inflammation of the rib muscles. But most importantly, I could comfort the patient telling him that this is likely was not his heart. What was interesting about this patient is that he had a history of heart attacks and strokes in his family starting as early as 40, which is relatively young. So just to make sure I wasn't missing any Anything. I looked at his EKGs and his test results and while he overall looked okay, the most important thing that I needed to do for him is make sure that he saw us in clinic to keep tabs on him. So after typing up my recommendations in the form of a note as well as speaking with AED providers, it's finally time to go home. And because it's been a long day, it's definitely time to take a serious nap because let's be honest, that curry from earlier is starting to cause a food coma, so time to go home. And so with that, I go ahead and call it an end to the day and my shift is finally over, 
Whatever. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did and want more videos like this in the future, support the channel by hitting that like button. Also consider hitting the subscribe button and notification bell so you can be the first to see our next videos. And if you're interested in doing better in medical school and you're just tired of trying to figure it out yourself, check out some of our free as well as paid programs down below. But as always guys, thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time my friend.